Since the late 1800s, Overbrook School for the Blind has been a leader in teaching children with visual impairment and blindness by providing them with lifelong skills. I visit this historic campus to learn about the ways in which the school's green spaces create opportunities for the students to learn by growing. We actually were founded in 1832 by Julius Friedlander. He began teaching two students out of his home downtown. Then the school moved to 20th and Race Street, and they were there for quite a while. And then in 1899, this building opened for us. There have been a lot of state-of-the-art updates. Can you tell us a little bit more about how that's been integrated into the design of the school? As you can see when you look at the campus, there are lots of stairs. And when it was built, obviously people were thinking of blindness and not about serving children with multiple disabilities or children with ambulatory needs. Throughout the years, the school has done a lot to make the buildings accessible while maintaining its beauty. And as we build new facilities, not only are we building them to meet the needs of the students, we're looking at things like energy efficiency, LEED certification, so that we are environmentally friendly as well. We look at features that blend into the environment so it doesn't look like it stands out, to make accommodations for low vision users to indicate where steps are, tactile modifications as well. And you'll see that in the Horticulture Center when you go in, Everything is accessible, from the front door to the classroom facility to the greenhouse itself, so our students have complete access to it. Our horticulture therapist who is here, Rich, was an incredible addition to the school. So what do we know? Do carrots grow above ground or below ground? Below ground. Below ground. Not only for horticulture, but for his support of students throughout the campus. Okay, you're gonna reach down, take a hold, and you're gonna have to pull a little bit. Whoa! He works with students just to do sensory integration needs. If you smell them, they smell so good. They it might be the textures of the plants, the smell mm -hmm. of the flowers. There's so many. Yeah. Look at this one, it kind of looks like a person. Oh, wow. Uh, Look. He has legs. He's got legs. <laughs> to actually learning how to care for plants manage the grounds to work experience mm. so that students could go on and look for a career in working with plants as well, whether it's in a greenhouse or as a cashier, food banks, because mm. the students deliver food to the food bank as well. That's so so it is, it's yeah. wonderful. Just a fantastic program for the students. You're gonna reach in and just crush them and break them up. Sometimes, like any kids, they want to get out of their classroom and do something new. And the Horticulture Center provides a different experience for them. There are smells, there's different textures, there's different sounds in there. Now, if you roll them in your hands, you'll break them into really fine pieces. Okay, well, well done. You guys did a really good job today. I'll come again. You'll come again? I would really like that. Okay. All right. Grab your canes. Go on, Savannah. Okay, bye. Bye-bye, friends. This original location started out as a classroom garden that just expanded and expanded over the years. It's a great educational space and teaching space, as well as it produces a large amount of the produce that we grow on campus and we donate to various organizations. Today we're going to see Miss Gabby's class. They're an early childhood class, about ages three to four, and we're going to be picking tomatoes. It's a fun activity for them to do, and it also gets them moving around, gets them out of the classroom for a little bit, and they get to see stuff that we grow on campus. The reason why we have U-shaped beds is because the wheelchairs can get in, and then the level and the height, they don't have to bend down, they don't have to get out of their chairs to experience the garden. Okay, you can put that in. When we approach our academics, we always are trying to make connections between how students will use them functionally in the real world. We have a lot of good opportunities here to teach these skills in the classroom, but also use them in other places. So for math, we can use some of those skills like weighing, talking about numbers, using fractions. Some produce. These are things that we've grown on campus and we're gonna weigh it and find out how much we grew. 
coming to the greenhouse is kind of their escape away from being in the classroom. But the trick is we still work on all the same goals that they work on in the classroom. We just work on them here in the greenhouse. I kind of joke that we trick them into doing therapy. They don't realize that they're doing therapy in here because they're having fun. Anyone want to take a guess how many pounds of carrots we had today? 1.5. Ooh, way higher. It's an exact number. 10. 10 pounds. We got a winner. Yeah. 10, 10, 10, 10 pounds on the note. A lot of our students love to create. So in any way, shape, or form, whether it's art class or in the horticulture center, they love to create. And for students that have visual impairments, it isn't always just what it looks like. It could be the smells, the textures, and all of that. Your flower is like a purple and white. Mine? Yep. And then the middle of it is very yellow. Wait, what colors are the others? You have a lot of beautiful different colors in there. We try to tie that in when we do our flower arrangements and not just have things that are visually appealing, but to also have things that smell good or feel good to touch. I love this one. Oh yeah, that's a red zinnia. My job as an occupational therapist is to help increase a student's independence, whether that's in the classroom or in a vocational setting, like cutting flowers or planting seeds or making flower arrangements. Man, that looks really good, Alonzo. Then it gives them a sense of accomplishment because they actually see a product in front of them. Yes. I appreciate your help. We probably weighed about 20-some pounds of produce, and we all got to make a flower arrangement. Yep. Here you go, teamwork. They already have challenges every day that they have to face, so to provide them with an environment where they can be successful and they feel like they're participating, I think it really just lifts everyone's spirits. All right, thanks, guys. They did great.